Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's good to be back at uh, Mobile World Congress. Uh, I've got about 10 minutes to rant at high speed. There's always that security professional trying to spoil all the fun of people creating cool things. And typically, it's me. <laughs> that being said, um, let me start out by, by saying, whilst I'm going to say quite a lot of, of, of negative things in, in places about some of the research I've done into to different devices, I do want to say that I'm a massive proponent of the Internet of Things, of mobile applications, and, and the possibilities that we have with these technologies. So don't take it as another security guy being negative. Like I'm trying to do my best to help. For those of you that haven't come across me before, uh, I do have a standard slide that I like to use uh, to explain my career. Um, you, you, you may have guessed from my attire, uh, I am essentially a, a massive geek. Um, so I spend the majority of my time ripping apart interesting bits of malicious code and looking at where cyber criminals might go next. So I want to tell you about a couple of research projects uh, that I've run over the past 12 months uh, and, and just a few of the findings. Research project number one, I heard a lot of bad things about Internet of Things devices. I, like you, saw a million and one headlines talking about how it was a disaster zone, it was going to be awful. And I wanted to know exactly what those issues were. What could an attacker really do with some of these devices? Were they as poorly implemented as these headlines claim? <coughs> So we went online and we bought about 5,000 pounds worth of Internet of Things devices. CCTV cameras, wireless toothbrushes, my favorite still, I absolutely love this one. It's a, a wireless plant watering device, which when you're on holiday, you can use to water your plants and kind of see them and there's, there's a little hand thing that, it, it basically seems totally pointless. I don't really get it at all, but it's really cool. And hacking it was brilliant, because you could make it just endlessly pour water onto the floor, which, <laughs> well, I enjoyed it anyway. It was fun. So <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in there that was, that was really quite you know, interesting and serious. There was other stuff where I really have no idea why people made it. But, you know, that's the Internet of Things. So we, we took all these devices and spent a lot of time kind of ripping them apart, looking at the firmware, looking at how they communicated, trying to understand exactly what these myriad of bizarre connected things uh, would do. Now, I don't have time to go through all of the findings here. Um, it would take a very long time. But what was interesting to me is the comparison of maturity of security issues compared to the traditional PC. I've spent the last 11 years of my life looking at malicious code and exploits targeted at traditional computers. I've looked at the work of cyber criminals who spent six, seven, eight months finding this really technically difficult to execute bug, a use after free in a popular web browser, and investing huge amounts of money finding ways to bypass the billion and one different layers of defense we've built into the modern computers that we use. And then I switched to these, these devices, and I can tell you that the majority of them were terrible. And I don't mean they could be hacked. I mean they were terrible. Some of them used plain text usernames and passwords. I could pull my home wireless network password out of an alarmingly huge number of devices. Uh, one of my favorites is a, a wireless doorbell, um, which you can actually just rip off the wall. And it takes about two minutes to get the wireless network <coughs> password that it connects to, uh, which is great fun. We found things like poor update procedures. One of the ones that sticks in my mind uh, to this day, CCTV cameras. I remember we had about 12 of them in, in our labs at the time. And of that collection, seven of them uh, were actually, uh, disappointingly, still vulnerable to, to heartbleed 
uh, a really big vulnerability and it even made you know, kind of CNN world news, sort of Jimmy Fallon talk show hosts were talking about a big vulnerability. We were vulnerable months after the thing had been patched and released. One of them, three weeks ago, is still vulnerable to it. Uh, there was also one device in that collection uh, which, which wasn't vulnerable uh, to, to Heartbleed, but that's because they just hadn't bothered to implement any encryption at all. Um, it's a feature I kind of like to refer to as a security through incompetence. Now, I could keep ranting through these examples, but the, the point is this. In many cases, we find flaws that show a fundamental lack of consideration for security, a fundamental lack of an effort to, to do things right. And that means that there's a huge opportunity to improve the security of the Internet of Things just by those of us in this community um, going back to the software development processes and ensuring that as part of quality assurance, as part of development, we ask a security question. We could make a huge improvement with that one behavior alone. Now, I want to mention one other quick thing here that's, that's kind of related. Um, we're obviously at Mobile World Congress, we're talking about the Internet of Things, but it, it's pretty hard in my mind to separate mobile devices and Internet of Things devices meaningfully. I mean, in many cases, these IoT devices are connecting to apps on mobiles. So having gone through this big IoT project, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to play with some mobile apps? Have a look at how secure they are. So we took the top 1,002, it's a great number. I mean, 1,000 would have been neat, but 1,002 is just superb. Apps, uh, mostly Android, uh, but a myriad of other platforms as well. And we looked for basic indicators of security consideration. The ability to make secure connections. The ability to use a modern cryptographic model for authentication. Things that we've been doing for a long time in our industry and really shouldn't be difficult in 2016. I want to share a couple of examples of the stunners from apps that are used by tens to hundreds of thousands of people. Right? These are not the kind of long tail minority apps. This one's beautiful. This is a little blob of data, suitably redacted, that is distributed by one of the applications in that set. It goes out uh, several times a day communications to every user of the app. This is the Twitter API secret key of the company in question. So they are sending the keys to take over their Twitter channel to post messages and direct message to every single person who has installed this application. This is what we like to call in the security industry really stupid. Now you can imagine <laughs> what you could do with this. It's, it's, it's a good example of, of doing it wrong. And the amazing thing to me is no one's noticed. Another one, we see lots of kind of use of, of clear usernames and passwords, outdated hashing mechanisms, you name it. The upshot of, of my rant is really this. I'm a huge believer in the potential of what we can do with these devices, what we can do with these apps. It's very clear to me from this cursory examination, let alone you know, the fun that we could have diving into any one of these applications in more depth, that the market we have here is focused absolutely on features, on delivering new shiny bits of functionality. And I'm not saying that's a surprise, and I'm not saying it's even necessarily bad, but we're accumulating significant tech debt a debt that we will all have to pay at some point in the future. And there are massive opportunities with small amounts of focus now to reduce that debt. Many of the IoT devices we're talking about today fall into the category of nice toy, more so uh, of nice toy, as opposed to truly life-altering, changing device. There are some of those out there, but more on the toy side. We must learn to get these security practices right in this brave new computing model 
before these devices end up in every aspect of our day-to-day -day lives, work, personal lives, you name it, where there's an opportunity for true impact to life and limb. I hope you enjoyed my brief rant. Uh, thank you for listening to me. If you want more details, hit me up online. And with that, I'll hand back to Mark. Thanks. Audit your code. Audit your code. Audit your code. I, I guess I can't emphasize that enough, right? Uh, we're going to change the pace a little bit. Uh, and